Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Daniel chapter 4 verse 9, Romans chapter 5 verse 18, and Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for just opening our eyes to the reality of sin and death and darkness and also opening our eyes to the reality of the light in Christ. We love you. We give you glory. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Daniel chapter 4 verse 9. O Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you and that no mystery is difficult, too difficult for you. Tell me the visions of my dreams that I saw and their interpretation. All right. And so this is, of course, after um, Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream of um basically a tree being cut down right and um the the fate um of that tree was really bad right it was lopped off it, the branches were lopped off and and he really didn't have an idea of what this meant and he had gone to his own magicians and people um his his regular staff and of course they didn't know and so um the the Daniel goes to Belteshazzar, who, whom he has named Belteshazzar, but we know that the actual name of the prophet was Daniel, right? And and Daniel um, was a man of God, and he knew that. He knew that he could interpret um, dreams truthfully and real, right? And so he says, oh, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, all right? And so even though man might know the right place to go to try to find information, it's always misplaced, right? It, he can't actually fully do the right thing. You can know the right thing and still not do it. You can um, intent have the intent to walk in the right way and still not do it, right? Um, still not actually fully fulfill it. See, if you look at this, it, they called him Belteshazzar, even after God had proven himself to be the true and living God, right? Even e this is right after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, had been pulled out from the fire, right? All these names that they had been given um, were names given by the king, and the king worshiped Baal. And so Shadmach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's real names were Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah, right? So in itself, they knew that the true and living God was real, and, and that all these things that they had had put on these men was all false. Belteshazzar's actually actual name was Daniel, right? Belteshazzar means um Baal protect the king, right? And so um in his name's essence, it's a worship of a false deity, a false god, after God had already proven himself to be real. And even after the king had declared that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was the true and living God, right? And so um and and that no one could speak against him and so now he knows the right place to go he's still calling him the old name right Baal protect the king but he's going he's going to the right place he's just got the wrong label on it right he's got the wrong spin on it and that's how the enemy deceives he doesn't cause you try to get you to go in the wrong just obviously wrong direction he gets it just a little skewed and remember Anything less than the straight and narrow way, which is Christ Jesus, is off, right? We cannot get off. We have to stay with Christ. It says, O Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the 
holy gods, plural gods, right? He's still talking about multiple gods. He's still not thinking about the true and living God, which is Daniel's God, right? He's still off, right? He's still misplacing the um the the glory right and and we know that he's misplacing the glory because this is the reason why he even has had this dream of this tree getting chopped down and so remember the tree getting chopped down is about um nebuchadnezzar's pride right and and how he he was giving the glory to himself remember nebuchadnezzar had built this huge false god for everyone to bow down to and 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 he was still he still had that miss place um glory mindset he still was thinking of himself before the true and living god right and so he said i know the spirit of the holy gods is in you and that no mystery is too difficult for you see he's looking at daniel as if daniel is the source so he's he's all mixed up here it says tell me the visions of my dream that i saw and their interpretation so he is he is not um focusing his attention in the right place he said one thing but his actions um went in another direction his actions still went in the direction of pride and we know further in daniel 4 20 i want to say it's 20 either 27 to, to 29 somewhere in there he actually gives himself all the glory, right? He gives himself all of the the glory, um, basically of all that he has built in his greatness, right? And that's when he was struck in with insanity, all right? And so here, belted this this reflection of this dream and this misplacement of um, God's glory is a reflection of the times that we live in and the great men and the great kings that are of the earth everyone makes themselves into their own little king and they have their own little kingdom um all of the everybody from the bottom to the top right and everybody's in charge of their own little kingdom even all the way up to the presidents and the kings and everybody you know looks at themselves as if they are the one to be glorified right in this type of worldly mentality and so we all have little shrines to ourselves and little, you know, um, if you think about some social media type things are are basically like shrines to people's selves, right? Um, um, glorifying ourselves and our achievements. And so if you think about that in that way, um, it's just like with Nebuchadnezzar, but with Nebuchadnezzar, God caused a great fall to occur. And that's the same thing that is soon to come with this world, right? Um, the seven years that Nebuchadnezzar was grazing in the field um like a cow um he he lost his position he lost his place um it's at the dew of heaven rested upon him the dew of the sky um and basically he was out in the wilderness just acting insane but those seven years represent the seven years of tribulation that are soon to come on the earth where the great will be brought low and so that humblingness that that humbleness that humility um, that is going to be put upon man is going to force many to see themselves um, as they truly are um, of the dust of the dirt right and so um, that is the interpretation that Daniel gave him Daniel basically hoped that it was for his enemies and not for him um, but it ended up being for him um, because 12 months later, after the fullness of time, um, that they he he spoke more words of pride about himself and boasting and he was put down right after the appointed time he was put down and he he was out in the field but God restored him back to his place and so um, over time after those seven years of basically what reflects tribulation all right the second scripture today is romans chapter 5 verse 8 therefore as one trespass led to condemnation for all men so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men 
All right. And so um, it, this is talking about uh, the act that Christ committed, right? The act of... Um, well, it's first talking about Adam's act and then Christ's act. And so with Adam, one act led to condemnation, right? That the eating of the fruit that they were told not to eat of. So that one act led to condemnation, but in the same way, the one act of, um, of um, Christ led to justification, right? And so, but his was even greater, right? Because he... So it was one act, it led many men to, to commit much sin, right? But Christ's one act of righteousness covered all sin. So Christ's act was actually greater because it was one act which covered a multitude of sin. And so we know that, you know, this world is coming in for a great fall, a great humbling, um, and uh, for many, a great destruction. But Christ is still God. He is still the Lord, right? Though many will misplace the glory for all of the wrath that is being poured out um, into different places, and many people will even curse God, um, God will still get the glory, right? God is still God. God is still over all, and Christ is still the son that he sent. So he is still the way, even in the midst of the tribulation, all right? And so, um, the third verse that the Lord gave me was Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So here, this is just speaking of um, the fact that, you know, God is, is is a God who is going to cause um, the good to come out of the bad. He works all things together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So even with Nebuchadnezzar, um, he had given God the glory, but he had so much pride in him that God had to put him in a position where he turned to God, right? And so it was a great humbling for a great man. And so, um, but he did turn to God. And so it says, um, he has made everything beautiful in his time. So it took a matter of time. It took him seven years of being in this place of humbling um, in, in order to, to be lifted up again. And in the same way, many of the people of the tribulation, it will take this great humbling in order to reposition position them um, to to be received again, right? Or to be received at all if they had never received Christ. And so it says he has made everything beautiful in his time. So it, there's a time that's going to pass, but um, there is still hope. And so it says also he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. And so that's just a great reflection of also what Nebuchadnezzar had um, done, right? Remember, he was, he had eternity in his heart. He knew that there was a true and living God. He knew that there was um, more than meets this natural eye, but he was displacing the truth for a lie, right? He was falling for the lie of the enemy that he was a God, that, that there were multiple gods, right? And so it says also he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So he was still calling him Belteshazzar. He was still saying that there were multiple gods. So there was something in him that knew that, um, that the true and living God was the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, as as well as Belteshazzar. I should just call them by their regular names, but um, uh, Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah, and Daniel. He, he in, but instead of 
calling them by their real names, calling him the true and living God. He was still addressing them by the names of Baal, by the name um, of the multiple gods. And he was still going in that same way that he was a God, right? Even though he had said the words that he said, his actions were showing something different. And that is also a reflection of an unwise bride, a person who has seen, right? And yet their actions are not reflecting what it is that they know is true in their heart and so um it, but the the same lord is the lord over all of us right um it doesn't matter if you are if you are you said it wrong or you did it wrong he's still god right he still knows the truth he still um is is sovereign and so when you do come back to your right mind when you do begin to walk in his ways he can still receive you back as long as there is still time right um during that seven years tribulation of course that there are there will be a moment of of ability to come back to God right and as long as they don't receive the mark they can they can be restored to God and they can repent call upon the name of the Lord right all right you guys let's pray thank you father God for this word thank you for salvation safety truth love that comes from you we know that you are the true and living god we say hallelujah we say all glory be to the true and living god the god of daniel the god of michel the god of um Hananiah and the God of Azariah, the God of the Hebrews, that is who we worship, that is who we give our praise to, forgive us for ever being prideful, help us to walk in your ways and come to true repentance before it is too late and we are in it. And, and people are forced to be humbled in tribulation, God in the name of Jesus and help those people who are in tribulation to be humbled and return back to you, God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys take care and be blessed.